Bi angen nodi ychydig o bwyntiau, cynelu'r y cyfarfod hyn ar ffurf hybrid, gyda rhai aelodau yn y siambr y senedd, ac eraill yn ymuno drwy gyswllt fideo. Bydd yr holl aelodau sy'n cymryd rhan yn rhyfodion y senedd le bynnag y bôn nhw yn cael eu trin yn gyfardal. Mae'r cyfarfod llawn a gynelu'r drwy gynhadledd fideo yn unol ar rheolau sefydlog senedd Cymru ac yn gyfystyr o thrafodion y senedd at ddibenion deddf Llywodraeth Cymru 2006. Bydd rhai o ddarpyriaethau rheol sefydlog 34 yn gymwys ar gyfer y cyfarfod llawn heddi a mae'r heini wedi nodi ar yr agenda chi. A hefyd dwi eisiau angen at goffa'r aelodau bod yr rheolau sefydlog sydd am wneud y threfn yn y cyfarfod llawn yn berthnasol i'r cyfarfod a gyr un mor berthnasol i'r aelodau sydd yn y siambr a'r rhai sydd yn ymuno drwy gyswllt fideo. Cyn i fi alw ar y prif weinidog i ateb y cwestiynau, dwi'n siŵr y bydd pob aelod yn ymuno am fi heddi i estyn ein cyd ymdeimlad gyda'r dirprwy lywydd Anne Jones yn dilyn marwolaeth i gŵr hi Adrian. Mae Anne, Victoria a Vincent a'u teulu oedd i gyd yn yn meddyliau ni y prynawn yma. Yr eitem gyntaf felly ar yn agenda ni yw'r cwestiynau i'r prif weinidog. Ac mae'r cwestiwn cyntaf gan Susie Davis. Uh, Deal Shawid, will the First Minister make a statement on financial support for universities? Shawid, we have provided more than £213 million to the Higher Education Funding Council for Wales during this financial year. That includes an additional £27 million to establish a Higher Education Investment and Recovery Fund in recognition of the impact of the pandemic on our universities. Uh, thank you, First Minister. Uh, with those figures, I think we can see that universities uh, are operating against a background where they don't get the full benefit of the full Barnard Consequential for Research and Innovation. So I'd be grateful to know how much of the £27 million COVID response payment you refer to has been used to support and retain postgraduate research students during this time, particularly as the number of overseas students who cross subsidise some of that work will be lower this year. And in particular, what in practice are they being given towards co uh, living costs and mental health support from this fund? And is this being replicated among undergraduates who are obviously are supposed to get uh, uh, support from this money as well? Uh, well, so as the employment of postgraduates uh, is a matter for the universities, uh, not for me. Uh, on the mental health point that the member raises, of course, that is a very important part of what we need to attend to as young people come back to their studies or begin their studies here in Wales. We provided £10 million over and above the initial allocations provided to HEFCU specifically for mental health and well-being amongst students. I'm very grateful to the National Union of Students for everything they are doing with us and with higher education institutions to make sure that that money is spent in the way that has the maximum impact upon the well-being and the mental well-being of those young people. I know that HEFCO is adding money uh, to the £10 million pounds that we have provided and that universities right across Wales will benefit from that fund. Helen Mary Jones. I'm sure the First Minister will agree with me that for the medium-term future of our universities, it's vital that they get sufficient access to funding for research. Um, does the First Minister share my concerns that at no time during uh, the whole of devolution in the last 20 years have our universities ever got what would have been their Barnet consequential from the research councils? And does the First Minister agree with me that it may be time to look at devolving that funding and that responsibility so that we can be making decisions here in Wales about what research we should be what, what research we should be prioritising and how we can support our universities to further develop uh, their research excellence. Uh, well, so I thank Kelly Mary Jones for that. Uh, she's right, of course, to say that Welsh universities have not received a Barnet share of UK-wide research council income, uh, and we are in continuous conversations with those research councils to make sure that applications from Welsh institutions are properly considered uh, and are not overlooked in a historic patterns of funding institutions elsewhere in the United Kingdom. Uh, I'm sure as well, uh, Chloe, that Helen Mary Jones will agree with me uh, that the loss of Horizon 2020 funding to Welsh universities is a particular threat to our research base here. 
Welsh universities, in contrast to their ability to draw down money from research councils, have punched far above their weight in getting Horizon 2020 money uh, into Wales. We do far better than the population share uh, there. And the failure of the UK government to guarantee that the United Kingdom and Welsh institutions will be able to go on participating in successor programmes to Horizon and to be able to benefit from them in the way that we have poses another threat to the research base of our higher education institutions. David Rees. Well, for the first minute, you just picked on an area I was going to ask you about, is the European funding. Now, our universities have benefited from European funding, not just Horizon 2020, but other streams of European funding. And what assurances have you had from the UK government that any funding stream that universities would have benefited from for research, for example, the coal and steel uh, funding, research funding projects, will be actually reallocated to Welsh universities and not put into a central pot and spread into other areas so that our universities can still continue to benefit from the funding that would have been available under the EU? Uh, well, there's no guarantee of any sort, uh, so is. Uh, I bitterly regret the fact that the UK government has refused to put inter-territorial cooperation programmes uh, on the table for post-EU membership funding. Uh, our universities in Bangor, Aberystwyth, Swansea, have benefited enormously from inter-territorial cooperation uh, funding, over 100 million euros uh, in that programme with Southern Ireland. Uh, and that has been a real catalyst for really important research in the marine environment, in renewable energy, 20 years worth of investment between our higher education institutions and higher education institutions elsewhere which now will not be able to be taken forward. And we've made the case, Lawith, repeatedly and repeatedly, and with other parts of the United Kingdom, uh, that we should continue to be members of those uh, cooperation programmes. And the UK government has simply been deaf to all the arguments that have been made to them. Caroline Jones. No, I'm sorry. Question die. Russell George. No, Lawith. Um... First Minister, will the First Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government support for GP practices during the COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, so I thank Russell George for that question. Our response to the COVID-19 pandemic has meant implementing considerable changes to GMS services. Further investment in the GMS contract has supported GPs to prepare and adopt new ways of working, including a national video consultation service in all GP practices in Wales. Thank you, First Minister, for your reply. I know you'll agree with me that uh, GPs have reacted quickly and flexibly um, during the pandemic, I think, which we all thank them for. Now, in spite of that, what I'm told by uh, GPs in my constituency is that despite a number of requests via the appropriate channels, uh, GPs have been uh, have stood alone. This is what they're telling me in planning and organising this year's flu uh, campaign. And they're telling me that Welsh Government have raised expectations uh, amongst patients by their promotion of the flu vaccination this year. No detail about how this will be uh, delivered. Uh, can you, First Minister, uh, reassure me today that GPs that will have adequate funding uh, to weather the winter pressures and that they will have um, rapid testing and results to ensure that they and their teams on the ground uh, have as little disru disru disruption as possible and that there will be the suspension of any unnecessary administration burdens so that they're able to continue delivering the high quality of care which of course they pride themselves <clears throat> on patients. Uh, well, so I do agree with what Russell George has said about the way in which primary care uh, GPs but other contractors as well have worked so hard during this uh, pandemic and they've been assisted by the Welsh Government uh, in that, uh, despite the fact that in the first six months of the pandemic, GP practices were unable to provide the enhanced services uh, for which they are paid through the contract. Uh, the Welsh Government paid them as though those enhanced services were being provided. And that was in order to provide financial stability for those practices during that difficult time. Uh, and I really do want to pay tribute to the way in which our GP practices have embraced the new technological possibilities that have come 
uh, with the pandemic. The Attend Anywhere uh, system, the video consultation service, over 10,000 video consultations now carried out in GP, GP practices uh, across uh, Wales. And that is being supported uh, by funding to practices to make sure that they are able to sustain that level of provision. As to flu uh, vaccination, uh, so it, I think it's great that people uh, want to come forward for vaccination. Uh, but vaccine is released from the UK pandemic stock uh, in tranches. And we have concentrated in the early stages on those who are over 65 and vulnerable uh, in other ways. Uh, we've enhanced the payment we give to GPs. They're getting an extra £1.75 for every flu vaccine that they carry out. I think that now means they're paid more than £12 for every vaccination and the Welsh Government pays for the cost of the vaccination itself uh, as well. Uh, and we'll continue to do that. Further guidance to GPs on how to access the additional stocks coming through the UK uh, was issued on the 14th of October. And I hope that that will have been uh, of uh, help to those who have been in touch with the member. Caroline Jones. Dear Llywydd, uh, First Minister, this pandemic has had a severe impact on primary care, placing additional obligations and burdens on an already struggling workforce. We know we need to recruit more GPs to cope with workloads in normal times, but as we enter um, cold and flu season with COVID-19 still running rampant, the pressures will be immense. First Minister, we know technology can play and does play um, a role in reducing these pressures. So what plans does the Welsh Government have to expand the availability of telemedicine in primary care in Wales? Diolch. Oh, well, thank you, Alan Jones. That, that is uh, a very important question. And I think in desperately difficult times, the way in which GP practices have been able to adapt to telephone consultations, to video consultations, has been a real hallmark of that response. Uh, and I've been talking to a number of people uh, recently who said to me just how easy those services have been to use. Uh, and how they wouldn't want to go back to uh, the way that things were previously provided when they would have had to have left their homes, made difficult journeys, struggled to park, sat in a waiting room with other people who were unwell uh, in order to do something which now they can do equally satisfactorily uh, from their own homes. Uh, another aspect, Chloe, uh, of the way in which technology uh, is coming to the assistance of our GP community is through the availability now of the Consultant Connect service, which means that GPs can connect directly to a consultant in secondary care if they have a patient in front of them uh, where they need that extra expertise which a consultant in a speciality is able uh, to bring. That's been very uh, important in a number uh, of our uh, GP practices, and I know is appreciated by those GP colleagues who now have that additional backup to the expertise which they themselves are able to apply. McAntoniv. First Minister, can I place on record the, my congratulations of the GP services in the Pontypridd and Taffili area for the way in which they've been administering the flu vaccine service. I had two text messages. I had a phone call. I attended the Tonarevel Leisure Centre for my flu vaccine, which was delivered in almost conveyor belt uh, uh, style. Uh, it took about two minutes to the whole process to be operated and a continual flow of, of local persons, particularly the first batch of the over 65s. Um, can I though raise the, the, the point that 
uh, I think a number of assembly members will have had uh, mentioned, and that is that there have been some hiccups in terms of supplies. Uh, I heard your answer earlier, and I'm just wondering what assurances can be given that there will be sufficient uh, supplies of the vaccine for all those who would actually benefit from the, uh, from the flu vaccine at the present time, bearing in mind its importance in terms of the comorbid comorbidity issue with regard to COVID. Uh, well, so with uh, Mick Anthony's uh, opening remarks, do remind me of a conversation I had only yesterday uh, with a young person in Cardiff who told me that she had telephoned her GP uh, surgery uh, in the morning. She had a reply back from the GP before 9.30. Uh, the GP sent her a text message by quarter to 10 for a video consultation. The video, the video consultation had been completed by 10 o'clock uh, in the morning and everything that that young person needed from her GP service had been concluded within 90 minutes of her making the original phone call. Uh, and I think that is a remarkable uh, service. And that young person was just full of praise uh, for the way it had all been conducted on her phone in the way that young people are able to do. And she certainly uh, wouldn't want to go back to the way things were before. In relation to the additional stocks, we will have over 400,000 additional vaccines uh, here in Wales compared to the supplies we had last year. They don't all arrive uh, at once and it's inevitable that there is some prioritisation in which those patients who are most at risk uh, get it first. We're very lucky the flu is in very low circulation in Wales at this point very early on, of course, in the flu season. We publish a weekly uh, data monitor of the circulation of flu through Public Health Wales uh, the first week, which I think is just two weeks ago, there were two reported cases of influenza uh, in the whole of Wales. So the prioritisation programme is working. It's working in line with clinical uh, risk. And over this winter and into December, there will be significantly additional vaccines available, enough to vaccinate an additional 40 to 50% of adults uh, in Wales able to get a vaccination free of charge in the NHS this year compared to those age cohorts we were able to provide a service of that sort to last year. Christina Naurgan, Arwain Wirreplay, dear. Arwain Ithplay Cymru, Adam Price. Uh, dear uh, no responsible uh, government or opposition First Minister could fail to support radical action in response to the national emergency which we are currently uh, facing. Of course, it's important uh, the mistakes by both governments which have led us to this point are acknowledged so we can learn the lessons to prevent successive waves of infection. But as the TAC report says, doing nothing new now would mean 2,500 extra deaths by the end of the year. A two-week firebreak would save almost 1,000 lives. A three-week firebreak, 300 more. It's incomprehensible under those circumstances, e indeed even reprehensible, that the Chancellor has refused to bring the job support key, uh, scheme forward or to top up uh, the furlough to the level of the first wave. It's difficult to believe the purse strings would be shut quite so tight if there were a circuit breaker in Surrey. To what extent was the UK government's intransigence on financial support a factor in determining the optimal length of the firebreak in Wales? Is progressive public health policy in Wales being hamstrung by Westminster's Tory economics. Well, sorry, let me thank Adam Price uh, for that and for uh, the support which I've heard him give over recent days to the idea of a firebreaker as a way to deal with that very, very sobering position set out, as he said, uh, in the TAC report. The sequence of decision-making, so it was, was that the Cabinet makes its decisions on public health grounds. Uh, we take our advice from the Chief Medical Officer, our Chief Scientific Advisor and others, and come to the conclusion uh, that the actions we uh, propose taking are the best ones to deal with the spiralling cases of coronavirus. We then look to the UK government uh, to play a part in dealing with the consequences uh, of those public health actions in the lives of individuals. Uh, that's why I wrote to the Chancellor asking him to bring forward the date of the JSS scheme to the 23rd 
uh, of October. Uh, and so it cannot be that it was financial reasons that prevented him from agreeing to that because we agreed as a Welsh Government to pay the additional £11 million pounds it would have cost the Treasury from our own resources if that was the sticking point. So it can't have been turned down on cost grounds. Uh, and it is difficult to see why the Chancellor didn't feel he was able to play his part. I've written again to him today, offering him a different solution, a solution in which the qualifying terms for the last week of the furlough scheme could be brought into line with the JSS scheme that will begin from the 1st of November and thus make it more available to more citizens here uh, in Wales. Uh, we keep offering solutions. So far, the UK government keeps turning them down. I do hope the Chancellor will find a different answer in his repertoire in, an, in response to my letter of today. First Minister, an, another defining issue where the people of Wales are at the mercy of, of Westminster is planning for the end of the Brexit transition period and the proposed UK internal market. Uh, I, I agree with the Council General uh, when he said that uh, a government seeking the power, a UK government seeking the power to spend in devolved areas and to control that spending is one which seeks to neuter and negate the devolution settlement. I agree with you, First Minister, that this will hasten the breakup of the United Kingdom. For Wales, the bill is damaging without precedent, emerging uh, fully fledged as the single biggest sustained assault yet to threaten democratic devolution. The bill conjures up the spectre of a no trade deal and the UK breaking international law, which, which has been condemned by just about everyone from the CBI to the Anglican Church. Given the Council General and your um, uh, well-founded concerns about the attitude and behaviour of the Westminster Government. What legal advice has the Welsh Government uh, t uh, re received uh, to, uh, on a potential challenge to the Internal Market Bill in the Supreme Court? Uh, well, so it, uh, the leader of Black is absolutely right to point to the threats posed uh, to Welsh businesses, to Welsh livelihoods, uh, and indeed to the powers of the Senev uh, by this bill. And members who don't agree with that don't need to listen to the leader by Cymru or indeed uh, to me. Uh, they could take note of, as Adam Price said, the letter published yesterday in the Financial Times signed by the Archbishop of Wales, the Right Reverend John Davis, which points to the damage to the United Kingdom's reputation uh, of that bill, the moral hazard that is involved in breaking international law and the threat that it poses uh, to the United Kingdom through the way in which it rides roughshod over the settled devolution arrangements endorsed in Wales's case in two successive uh, referendums. Uh, and if there are members who don't uh, wish to take their uh, advice from uh, those with spiritual uh, credentials. They simply need to read the report of the House of Lords Constitutional Affairs uh, Committee, uh, which once again uh, urges the government to withdraw the clauses uh, that are an assault on devolution, uh, to rely as we urge the government to rely uh, on the work that has gone on between us all to develop common frameworks. We believe in resolving the problems. We believe in a level playing field, but we believe that those problems should be agreed in their solution rather than imposed on the rest of us. Uh, our legal advice, though, it at this point is focused on crafting amendments, which we have published and hope to see laid in the House of Lords, because we think that there are still parliamentary opportunities to right the wrongs that this bill brings about, both to the devolution settlement uh, and to the way in which the United Kingdom's standing will be damaged in the world. Whether it's COVID or Brexit, being wedding, wedded to Westminster is having disastrous consequences for, for Wales. The Health Secretary in England is overseeing a calamitous lighthouse lab system hampering the Welsh COVID response, while the Chancellor turns a blind eye to the struggles of Welsh businesses, workers and the self-employed. Compare our situation with that of New Zealand. I'm sure, First Minister, you will want to join me in congratulating Jacinda Ardern on her stunning 
victory. Here is a Labour politician in a country not much bigger than Wales in its population who has presided over one of the most successful COVID responses anywhere in the world. Not only is New Zealand COVID free, it is also free from the British state, its blustering Prime Minister and his cabinet of calamities. The Prime Minister is utterly shambolic, whose indifference to Wales borders on contempt. Your words, First Minister, not mine, but with which I nevertheless agree. Given how Westminster is wreaking havoc on Wales, are you not remotely tempted by the notion of Wales joining New Zealand as an independent nation, small, successful and progressive? Uh, so, well, of course, I congratulate uh, the leader of the New Zealand Labour Party on her fantastic victory in their general election. And I very much look forward to the day uh, when the present Prime Minister is no longer uh, in office. Does that amount to a belief that Wales's future is better off being ripped out of the uh, United Kingdom? I don't think it does. Uh, we have the double advantage here in Wales. We have strong, assertive devolution using all the powers we have to defend people here in Wales. But working people in Wales have very important interests in common with working people in Scotland, England and Northern Ireland uh, and removing ourselves from those alliances, taking ourselves out of the insurance policy that the United Kingdom provides to working people here in Wales is not the answer uh, to making a success of our future. An assertive devolution in a successful United Kingdom. That is the recipe that defends the interests of Welsh people. Arweinydd the Ceidwadwyr Cymreig, Paul Davis. Diolch, yeah, yeah, yeah. uh, Llywydd. Uh, First Minister, the Wales-wide lockdown announcement yesterday has left many people across Wales frustrated and disappointed that their freedoms will be curtailed, their ability to see their loved ones restricted and their businesses told to close. Whilst I'm open-minded about further restrictions, regardless of what others may say, the full picture of data that is available to us simply doesn't justify a national lockdown. And I think the Welsh Government's national lockdown will disproportionately harm communities and businesses where cases are already low, such as the whole of Mid and West Wales. First Minister, according to Public Health Wales' latest data, in 20 of the 22 local authority areas, cases of COVID-19 per 100,000 has gone down from week 41 to week 42. How can you justify a national lockdown when figures in all but two areas are actually coming down? Well, it's very easy indeed to justify it, Llywydd, uh, because while the efforts that have been made by people in those local lockdown areas uh, are succeeding, uh, they cannot succeed far and fast enough to turn back the tide of coronavirus as it is currently accelerating across Wales. So I very much uh, want to thank those people in those areas for all the efforts they have already made. And the two week fire break period that we are introducing uh, will build on the success that those measures have had. But the sober truth is, Flawid, as the TAC report that we published yesterday says, but unless we take these actions, cases and hospital admissions will rise across Wales, that there is compelling evidence for further interventions, and that unless we do so, 6,000 additional deaths will take place due to coronavirus over this winter. What more data does the member need before he is prepared to do what his duty should tell him he should do, and to support the actions being taken to save the NHS and to save lives in Wales. Well, First Minister, you say that there is compelling uh, evidence. You say you publish all the data, but information on a community-to-community -community basis is still not available yeah. in all parts of Wales, and data on a transmission basis and on a demographic basis is certainly not available. So I would urge you to publish that level of information as a matter of urgency. Now, First Minister, to my mind and to thousands of people living right across Wales, the Welsh Government's decision to implement a nationwide lockdown in response to the figures I've <coughs> just mentioned 
is unjustified. And it'll take more than a one-size-fits-all approach to tackling this virus in our communities. We have to see a much more targeted intervention approach. Yeah. And yet from Friday, everyone living in Wales will be under the same restrictions regardless of whether the data shows further intervention is needed. And in your press briefing yesterday, you made it clear that you don't expect to see any results at the end of the two-week period and that it'll be a little while later before cases will fall. Therefore, can you tell us exactly what criteria the Welsh Government will use to measure the success of a national lockdown? And should the Government not get the results it wants in all 22 local authority areas, then can the people of Wales expect a further lockdown in the very near future? Well, Chloe, the reason that we ask people in all parts of Wales to take part in the two-week fire break period is because we need a national effort, a national effort which would be much enhanced if his party were prepared to support it rather than attempting all the time to undermine it. I'm hugely grateful to those people from his constituency and other parts of West Wales who contacted my office to express their support for the actions we are taking. Uh, they understand that they are not immune from the way in which coronavirus is spreading elsewhere in Wales. Uh, they understand that unless they are protected too, that their local services will come under huge pressure. Unlike the member, they want to make their contribution uh, to saving lives and saving the NHS here uh, in Wales. And that's what this period will do. That is what the SAGE uh, committee tells us. That is what the chief medical officer tells us. That is what our own technical advisory group tell us. I don't know what data the member thinks he needs that will allow him to believe that his uh, ability to analyse would trump the ability of our scientists, of clinicians, to do exactly uh, that. Uh, he was right about one thing, uh, that it is impossible that we will see the results of... I, I, I can't hear the First Minister at this point because there's a debate going on within the Chamber. If we can have some silence so that at least I can hear the First Minister. Carry on, please, First Minister. Diolch, uh, Llywydd, uh, the Leader of the Opposition was right in one thing, uh, that we will not see the impact of the measures we are having to take during the time that the measures themselves will be uh, in place. It will take longer than that for them to feed through uh, into the key figures. And if he wants to know what the key figures are for a man so interested in data, I would have thought he'd have spotted them for himself. It will be to reduce R from where it is today, between 1.2 and 1.4 to below one, to stem the flow of people into our hospital beds suffering from corona virus, to see a fall in the positivity rate amongst those be people being tested uh, in Wales, and the range of other measures that are set out for the members' perusal uh, in the tax summary report that we have published. Well, First Minister, I've already told you the data which your government should be publishing. You should be publishing data on a community-to-community -community, uh, basis in all parts of Wales. You should be publishing data on a transmission basis. You should be publishing data on a demographic basis. That information is not uh, available. It's not being made available by your uh, government, and it is being made available by other governments across uh, the United Kingdom. And on your point about constituents uh, contacting uh, us as members, I can tell you I've had many constituents contact uh, me very concerned about the temporary national lockdown that you intend to uh, impose. And a second national lockdown could have uh, a, a huge uh, impact on the sustainability of businesses right across uh, Wales and could be devastating for businesses in West Wales, in Mid Wales and some parts of uh, North uh, Wales. Now, the Welsh Government has announced a package of support to cover some businesses over the 17 days of a Wales-wide lockdown, but there really needs to be more detail by way of how the Welsh Government will protect the sustainability of businesses for the future, particularly if the Welsh Government is considering further lockdowns, as suggested by you yesterday in a TV interview. Now, the Welsh Retail Consortium has said that, and I quote, this revenue-crushing firebreaker alone will put thousands of jobs and hundreds of shops at risk. But if it extends into November, it could be a disaster for high streets across Wales." Unquote. 
Therefore, can you tell us where the £300 million enhanced economic resilience fund support will come from within your current budgets? And can you confirm that the Welsh Government has undertaken an economic assessment of the costs incurred, as well as the number of jobs that may be lost as a result of a Wales-wide lockdown, and that as a result the Welsh Government is fully prepared to reimburse businesses who are directly affected by the latest announcement? Uh, sorry, the Welsh Government has drawn together over £294 million from a range of sources within uh, our own existing uh, budget, and we have uh, drawn on some additional consequentials that have come through the UK Government as a result of support to businesses in uh, level three lockdown areas in England. Uh, all of that will be used to support those businesses who are affected by this temporary fire break period. Let's be clear, the choice is not between doing what we are doing and simply carrying on as things are, because to do that will undermine businesses even more. Businesses who find that workers can't come into work because they are infected with this disease, people who are required to self-isolate because they've been in contact with a growing number of people infected by coronavirus, people who, businesses who find that people are fearful of coming into their premises because coronavirus is escalating away from uh, our ability to control it here in Wales. So the actions we are taking will be to the benefit of business beyond the fire break period. It will stabilize the numbers, it will bring things back under control, it will create the conditions in which business can go on trading up until Christmas. I would have thought the member would have welcomed that. I haven't heard a single word from him this afternoon that suggests that he's doing anything other but continuing to undermine the efforts that are being made here in Wales to do the things that are necessary to protect our health service, to save lives, to invest in those businesses who have a future beyond coronavirus. Uh, it's a dereliction of responsibility, Tawib, for a party in this uh, Senate not to put their support behind the measures that are necessary at this crucial point, this emergency point in a pandemic, to do the right thing by the people of Wales. Question three, Jenny Rathbone. Uh, thank you. Um, what action will be taken to prevent the UK Internal Market Bill from restricting the Welsh Government's efforts to transform the well-being of people in Wales? Uh, sorry, I thank Jenny Rathbone for that. We have published a set of model amendments to demonstrate how to safeguard the UK internal market without the unnecessary restrictions on devolved competence that this bill would introduce. We will work intensively to gain cross-party support in the House of Lords and to persuade the UK government to think again. Um, I heed the words of Baroness Elora Finlay, who, uh, a cross-party um, uh, member of the House of Lords and a very eminent um, clinician, that the uh, Internal Markets Bill would allow our country to be overrun by a chlorinated chicken and other adulterated food manufactured in the United States. And that is a recipe for obesity and shortened lives. But having been told we wouldn't get a penny less for Wales if we voted to leave the EU, would this bill also enable the UK government to divert the money Wales previously received from EU structural funds for universities, for businesses, and strengthening communities through our voluntary sector in order to spend it on something else altogether, depriving Wales of vital investment funds. What is to stop the shared pros the so-called shared prosperity fund becoming more largesse for Serco and the Boston Consulting Group, those geniuses who run the English test and trace system? Well, sorry, I'm afraid the sad uh, answer is that there's nothing to stop uh, that from happening. And in fact, this door, this bill opens the door to exactly uh, that. I'm very grateful indeed to Baroness Finlay. Uh, as uh, Jenny Rathbone said, a really distinguished crossbencher in the House of Lords for her assistance to us in getting our amendments, amendments supported uh, by Plaid Cymru, 
uh, peers, by Liberal Democrats peers, by crossbench uh, peers and others in the House of Lords to make sure that those amendments are being laid uh, for a debate. Uh, the points that Baroness Finlay makes are the ones that Jenny Rathbone has echoed here. This is a bill that means that this Senate couldn't prevent food being sold in Wales that is produced to below the standards that people in Wales enjoy uh, today, that couldn't even uh, allow us to require that food to be labelled so that Welsh citizens would know what it is that they are being offered, couldn't prevent that food from being produced to lower animal health standards, wouldn't allow us to carry out our plan to ban nine different types of single-use plastics, couldn't uh, allow us to require head teachers as we do today to have the level of professional qualification we currently require them to have uh, in Wales. And over and above all of that, uh, it takes away the ability of this Senate and our partners in Wales to make the decisions about where money for economic development that has made such a difference. Those decisions will not be made in Wales where they ought to be made, but behind a desk in Whitehall. It really is uh, a dog's breakfast of a bill. We are working hard alongside others uh, to try to put those problems right. And I'm grateful for the support we're getting in the House of Lords right across the spectrum there to do exactly that. Andrew R.T. Davis. Presiding officer, uh, First Minister, obviously in many debates in the House of Commons, it's been identified that not one single power will be removed from the Assembly because of this bill, or should I say the Welsh Parliament. You said in an earlier response to another question that powers would be being removed. Could you list the powers that you believe this bill will remove? Uh, well, I just did, uh, sorry, I don't know whether the member was listening at all. I've just explained to him that the powers we have today to prevent food being sold in Wales uh, at a standard below that which we, the Senate, have deemed right for Wales. That power is being taken away from us. Uh, the power that we have to require food to be properly labelled, that power is being taken away from us. The power to sustain animal health standards in Wales, that power is being taken away from us. The power to ban single-use plastics in Wales, that power is being taken away from us. The power to set professional qualification standards for teachers in our schools and head teachers, that's being taken away from us. What more powers does he want me to list? Delith Jewell. Delith Jewell. Gail Flowed. The Welsh Government has recently said it will be joining the Wellbeing Economy Alliance, a move that we've welcomed, and this is meant to place wellbeing at the centre of economic decisions. With this in mind, what can the Welsh Government do if spending decisions taken by the UK Government as a result of this bill have an adverse impact on wellbeing indicators in Wales, such as health, the environment and sustainability? Does being part of the Wellbeing Economy Alliance have to take a backward step if the UK Government determines that they don't like what we're doing? And if that's the case, First Minister, what discussions will the Welsh Government be having with other partners in the Alliance to explain that Westminster can trample over our good intentions? Uh, well, thank you, Stuart, for that, uh, Llywyd. Wales is a relatively recent member of the Wellbeing uh, Economy Alliance. I'm very glad, uh, indeed, to have been invited uh, to do so. And, of course, Della Stuart is right that other members of the Alliance are also adversely affected uh, by this bill. Uh, our efforts at this point are concentrated on turning the bill back rather than dealing with its adverse consequences, because that is the better way to solve this problem, uh, to convince the UK government uh, through the actions we will take working with others, uh, not to inflict that harm on us uh, in the first place, because that, that harm will be felt, not just directly in Wales in terms of the things that we would want to do, but it will affect our ability to work with others uh, to advance those simple but progressive causes that have done so much to protect people here in Wales, to protect them from adulterated food, to protect animal health standards, to advance uh, a genuinely environmental uh, agenda here in Wales. Uh, we don't want to see that. People in Wales don't want to see that. Uh, and we will work with others, as I've said, 
not just in Wales, but in the Alliance as well, to go on making that case. Question, Pedwar Joyce Watson. Uh, Dear Clawit, uh, what assessment has the First Minister made of the increase in the number of people claiming universal credit? Uh, thanks, Joyce Watson, for that. Between February and September of this year, a rise of over 120,000 claimants of universal credit took place in Wales, and that was an increase of 80%. The September claimant count stood at 271,186 people, compared to 150,527 back in February. Uh, I thank you uh, for your answer, First Minister. And in April, UK government increased universal credit payments by uh, £20 a week. And that indeed did serve as a lifeline uh, for many families during uh, the pandemic. But this increase is only temporary and it's due to end in April 2021. There have been many, many calls from many, many charities right across uh, the UK. Uh, to request continuation of that extra £20 a week. But despite that, the UK government have so far uh, not committed to making that increase uh, permanent. And therefore, it's estimated that if the additional payment is stopped as planned, over 4 million families will lose an equivalent income of £1,000 uh, a year overnight. Uh, and that's plunging thousands into uh, poverty. Uh, First Minister, what discussions have you had with UK ministers regarding uh, making this temporary uplift uh, permanent? Well, sorry, I want to agree absolutely with Joyce Watson. That £20 a week is a real lifeline for so many families here in Wales, families out to work and in work, uh, who work in low paid uh, occupations. It was very disappointing. Uh, that the Chancellor, when he had an opportunity uh, only a couple of weeks ago in announcing other ongoing support, that he did not commit to continuing that £20 a week lifeline for so many families across uh, the United Kingdom. And I can assure uh, Joyce Watson that this is raised directly with UK ministers. When I have an opportunity, our finance minister will be meeting again with UK ministers this week. It's on the agenda for her to raise it with them uh, as well. Uh, I think the member uh, will know that uh, I had the privilege of sharing a platform with the former Prime Minister Gordon Brown uh, at the weekend, speaking on behalf of uh, the Alliance for Full Employment. Uh, I was very pleased to see the Archbishop of Canterbury uh, writing to Gordon Brown yesterday, uh, setting out his support for the Alliance and focusing in what he said on child poverty and on the £20 uh, that is currently available to families through that additional sum in universal credit. And absolutely, uh, any government uh, that is serious about sustaining families through these difficult times wouldn't hesitate to make that £20 a permanent addition to the incomes of some of the poorest people in our country. Question, Pimp Alan Davis. What discussions has the Welsh Government had with the UK Government regarding the extension and expansion of the job retention scheme for areas under local restrictions? Uh, so we thank Alan Davis for that. The advantages and the limitations of the UK Government support to workers affected by the impact of coronavirus were extensively rehearsed between all four nations of the UK uh, at the last COBRA meeting. Uh, I have since, as members have heard, exchange correspondence with the Chancellor of the Exchequer on this matter. Thank you very much, uh, First Minister. And of course, the question precedes the um, announcement yesterday on um, the uh, approach being taken over the next few weeks. I, I'm sure you share my disappointment that the United Kingdom government is not stepping into the breach and providing seamless support for people who are uh, affected by that. But it would be useful, I think, First Minister, if you could outline to us this afternoon how you see support for both workers and for businesses over the two-week uh, national lockdown and how you see the different schemes meshing together to ensure that we have seamless support for people um, throughout this period 
and, the, and how you see any gaps in that support being addressed as we move forward. Uh, so I want to thank Alan Davis for that question. And you know, he repeated the word seamless uh, in his supplementary, and that's the word I want to focus on uh, in this uh, reply. Uh, so in the help that we will provide through our £294 million, pounds, uh, a great part of that will be provided automatically to businesses in Wales. Uh, so they will not need to apply for it. It will come through the mechanisms we developed with our local government colleagues earlier in the pandemic. £1,000 for all businesses with a rateable value of under £12,000, £5,000 for businesses with a rateable value above uh, £12,000, and they'll get that automatically, seamlessly, to use the term that uh, Alan Davis uh, used. Uh, my problem with a Chancellor's reply to my letter is that I was asking for something similar in relation to the help that the UK government uh, provides. And I've tried whenever I've had the opportunity to recognise the value of the help that the UK government has provided to workers affected by coronavirus. Uh, all I wanted was to have one scheme of help in Wales rather than businesses having to apply twice for help, once up until the 30th of October, and a different scheme beyond that. And as I say, I offered, I thought, the Chancellor a very straightforward way of helping businesses in Wales so that the help they got from the UK government was as seamless as the help we want to offer them through the Welsh government. Uh, and it is disappointing that the Chancellor couldn't find a way, simply of allowing the scheme that he will introduce on the 1st of November to apply here in Wales a week earlier uh, than that. I've offered him today a different solution, not as good as that, but would help to iron out some of the difficulties otherwise that businesses will face. And it would go some way at least uh, to answering the call that Alan Davis has made for the seamless support that businesses in Wales need. Question Hwech, Don Bowden. Will the First Minister update the Senate on Welsh Government uh, housing support for children leaving care? Uh, Thank Don Bowden for that. So with Welsh Government housing support for care leavers includes investment in both physical infrastructure and the services needed to help young people become successfully established in this phase of their lives. Direct help is provided by local authorities and third sector organisations in all parts of Wales. Um, thank you for that answer, First Minister, and I thank you for your personal commitment to, to this issue. Um, the recent report by End Youth Homelessness Cymru highlighted a number of housing issues for young people in and leaving care, including the impact of the local connection rules on their choice of home. Will the Welsh Government look in detail at this report and consider what further action can be taken to assist this group of young people who need and deserve the most effective support that we can provide? Well, thanks, Don Bodden, uh, for that question, for drawing attention to this important report. Uh, the End Youth Homelessness Coalition, uh, of course, is led by uh, SAMAI, uh, an organisation uh, of which I had the privilege of being one of the first three founder members uh, over 30 years uh, ago now. Uh, I've read uh, the report. It makes compelling reading because it speaks in the voice uh, of those young people in Wales who have found themselves threatened with homelessness or actually experiencing homelessness. Uh, and uh, I think the reason why I find the report compelling uh, is that those views are translated by the authors of the report into some very straightforward actions which I think can still be made to improve the system. The simple idea, for example, that if a young person threatened with homelessness or having experienced homelessness, who's been in care, presents themselves to a local authority, there should be a multidisciplinary case conference called chaired at a senior level to make sure that all the things that are needed for that young person are mobilised across the boundaries of services and organisations as fast as possible. The report says that if a local authority places a young person in a different local authority, that when that young person comes to the age of 18, they should not be turned down by that second local authority for help on the grounds that they have no local connection. Uh, it's for the young person to decide whether they feel most settled in their new local authority or in their original local authority. And it's just that level of translating experiences into practical policy proposals that I think 
makes this report so valuable. And I know that my ministerial colleagues, both uh, in social services and in housing, will be studying it very carefully to take those lessons and to apply them uh, in the lives of those young people. Question Scythe, Dyloid. Uh, um, Pass a shed mar prevail you dog with your night or give no guess to that guy, Leo Valwer and Henry. So, with Jock of our E. Dr. Lloyd, I'm a question. My Gavalier and Munebi Puisai Ariano Solvevo and Skila Pandemic. My father at Cymru Vesli would he create Cronva, Galedig Newid, Urth, Gwerth, E. Million of Benai. Bell, a Kinniguid Gansavilia died, Gavalier Ginid Lethal. Cabot Hin, I Gahoidi and Kanhara Heavy. Gadam Ungam Hariad are Kansin Genid Lethal Newid are Gavir Govalwir. Can I thank the First Minister um, very much for that answer? And in addition, um, uh, an Alzheimer's Cymru investigation released earlier this month, uh, the First Minister will be aware, showed that uh, family carers across Wales are feeling burnt out. Uh, carers Wales have said something similar. Uh, this week. The uh, original survey found that 95% uh, of family carers surveyed said that extra caring hours over this COVID period had negatively impacted their physical or mental health, with 69% feeling constantly exhausted, 49% feeling depressed, and 50% developing problems sleeping. Uh, now, I hear what you say about uh, the financial uh, situation, and I thank you for that, uh, First Minister. Could I ask you what additional support is the Welsh Government putting towards addressing these findings in terms of the physical and mental well-being of informal carers? And do you agree that providing additional counselling and respite support is going to be vital to carers over the winter months? Uh, so we can thank uh... Dr. Lloyd, for those additional questions. It will be a year next month since his committee published their report, Caring for Our Future. Uh, and that report goes on being very influential in the thinking of the Welsh Government. Uh, I had an opportunity earlier uh, in the year, together with Julie Morgan, the Minister for Social Services, to meet with a group of informal uh, carers. Uh, they were tired then, uh, they were already uh, living with uh, the challenges of caring for other people during the pandemic. And it was, it was deeply moving uh, in that meeting to hear from them, both about the challenges uh, that they face, but also about their astonishing commitment to those people for whom they have caring responsibilities uh, and the rewards that they reported that they get even in those most challenging times uh, from having that relationship and carrying out those responsibilities. Uh, it was partially in recognition of everything we were told then uh, that my colleague Julie Morgan was able to announce £50,000 earlier in the summer uh, to Carers Wales for them to provide additional psychological support for unpaid carers here in Wales. Uh, it goes some way to answering the points that Di Lloyd raised in his supplementary question uh, about the ongoing uh, wear and tear that is felt in the lives uh, of unpaid carers at this most difficult time. And I hope that the Million Pounds Fund uh, that we've been able to announce today uh, will go further still to help them with the sheer practical impact of caring for others has on them during such a challenging time. Question Oith, Jack Sargent. Uh, Dioc Flawith, how is the Welsh Government tackling antisocial behaviour in Allen and Deeside? Uh, so thank you. The Welsh Government is committed to ensuring people in our communities are safe and feel safe. We continue to work with our four police forces, local authorities and the UK Government, as well as other agencies, to help ensure our people and our communities are protected from antisocial behaviour. Thank you for the answer, First Minister. Just under the year ago, the Prime Minister came to my constituency of Allen and Deeside and promised significantly more police and safer streets. Now, this promise has been broken. I recently asked my residents for their experiences of crime and antisocial behaviour, 
and they told me straight there are less police on the streets than they can ever remember. Now, I have written to the Home Secretary to ask for an explanation and an apology, and First Minister, none has been forthcoming. Will you come and speak to my residents, hear their anger with the UK Conservative government, and take this message directly to Boris Johnson that he has let the residents in Allen and Deeside down? Well, so I've been uh, following the conversations that Jack Sargent has been having with his local communities on this uh, Matt, and I absolutely commend uh, the work that he is doing to hear directly from those local residents and to relay the story that they are telling uh, about the failure uh, of the Prime Minister to honour the promises that he was making this time last year. Last year, uh, he was acting as though uh, the fall in the number of police officers on our street was nothing to do with the 10 years of cuts that his Conservative colleagues had made in police budgets. He was acting as though uh, in restoring some of those cuts, he was offering some great leap forward when all he was doing was making good on the damage that his colleagues had already done. A year on, uh, they've not made good the damage at all. I know that Jack's constituents will still value the 500 extra PSOs that this Welsh government funds from our uh, resources. The leader of the Conservative Party here in Wales uh, was telling people in Wales only a week or two ago that he would stop all expenditure uh, by a Conservative government here in the Senedd on non-devolved responsibilities. I wonder if he was willing to point out to them that that would mean the end of the 500 extra officers that people in Wales see on their streets uh, today. Not only is there no fulfilling of promises made to Jack Sargent's constituents, but a Conservative Party here in Wales would take away the help that is being provided through this Senedd. Diolch i'r Prif Wynidog. Yr eitem nesaf felly yw'r cwestiynau'r Cwnslwr Cyffredi 